Welcome back to Italian Military Archives. In today's video, we will take a look at the development of the Regia Marina in between the two world wars. We will see who and what influenced the Italian naval policy and its naval constructions between 1922 and 1940. This period, starting with the entry into force of the Washington Naval Treaty and ending with Italy entering the Second World War, can be divided into two distinct parts, if we consider the international context and the priorities of the Italian Navy. I would call the period from 1922 to 1932 as the Cruiser Era, while the years from 1933 to 1940 can be seen as the return of the battleships. The Washington Naval Treaty, signed in 1922, limited the size of capital ship's fleet of each signatory power. Italy was allowed to retain 175,000 tons of capital ships, the same amount granted to the French Navy. The treaty prohibited the construction of new battleships until 1931, the so-called battleship vacancy. France and Italy were allowed to build new battleships already from 1927 and 1929 due to the lower military value of their existing capital ships. At the time, the Regia Marina had no super dreadnought in service and could count on five dreadnoughts Dante Alighieri, Cavour, Cesare, Duilio and Andrea Doria, plus four pre-dreadnought battleships of the Regina Elena class. There was also the hull of battleship Leonardo da Vinci, salvaged after an internal explosion had sunk it in the waters of Taranto. The vacancy was very well received by a financially stressed Italy, dealing also with a troubled post-war period characterized by economic, political and social turbulences. Besides the limits on the construction of new battleships, the Washington Naval Treaty basically gave birth to a new kind of ships, widely known as the Treaty Cruisers, or Tipo Washington, as they were referred to in Italy, with a maximum displacement of 10,000 tons and a maximum caliber of their main guns set at 203 mm or 8 inches, the signatories of the treaty ventured in a new era of naval constructions, where battleships were temporarily put aside. In the new context, the Regia Marina considered the French Navy, the Marine Nationale, as its main rival, and almost all the naval constructions from the 20s to the 30s started by the two countries were essentially an answer to what the other one was doing. After the French started the construction of the Duguetruyen and the Duquesne class cruisers, the Regia Marina approved the construction of its first treaty cruisers, the Trento and the Trieste. In 1925 came up the idea of building a group of smaller cruisers displacing between 4,000 and 5,000 tons to give the Regia Marina a more numerous force of modern cruisers, able to carry out convoy raiding and to counter the large French destroyers of the La Fantasque class. From this idea originated the first ships of the Condottieri series, the Giussano class. In 1927, the Regia Marina and the Marine Nationale tacitly agreed to not start the construction of new battleships, Thus, the Navy leadership decided to build a new tranche of treaty cruisers, this time with more protection than the Trento class, since the new ships were seen as a kind of substitute to battleships, whose future still remained obscure. From this new requirement, the Zara class was born, with the first two ships, Zara and Fiume, ordered in 1928 and laid down in 1929. In that same year, the Navy ordered the construction of two light cruisers of the Cadorna class, an evolution of the Giussano still in construction, a third Zara class cruiser, the Gorizia, and a third Trento class cruiser, the Bolzano. The choice of building a third Trento inferior to the Zara is a bit puzzling, but has political and economical explanations. The Ansaldo, one of the biggest industries in Italy, had received so far no commissions for heavy cruisers, and thus it pressured the government to obtain one for its shipyards located in Genova. For his part, the Regia Marina decided to build a third Trento since it will have granted the formation of two homogeneous heavy cruiser divisions based on three ships of similar characteristics, or two ships 
if one was not serviceable. Thus, the Bolzano came to be, although the original Trento design was radically improved, receiving influences from the Zara design. The naval programs from 1930 to 1932 allowed for the construction of one last Zara-class cruiser, the Pola, and six excellent light cruisers, the Montecuccoli, the Muzio Attendolo, the Duca d'Aosta, the Eugenio di Savoia, the Duca degli Abruzzi, and the Giuseppe Garibaldi. In the late 1920s, the future of the battleships was far from being bright, and both the Regia Marina and the Marine Nationale tacitly agreed to not start a new arms race, at least concerning battleships. The Dante Alighieri was decommissioned and scrapped in 1928. Cavour was disarmed and the Cesare transformed into a training ship. Only the two duillas were kept in service, although mostly for mere appearance. In 1930, the London Naval Treaty extended the battleship vacancy until 1936, an extension positively welcomed by many. However, the turning point came in 1932, when the French laid down the battle cruiser Dunkirk, a direct response to the reconstruction of the first Deutschland-class pocket battleship in Germany. In 1932, the Regia Marina's Committee of Admirals met to evaluate the response to the Dunkirk. Among the proposals emerged in the meeting, the one ultimately selected was a radical modernization proposal for the two dreadnoughts of the Cavour class. Until then, the reconstruction or modernization of the old units had never been considered, mainly because their underwater protection was considered insufficient and the room for improvement too little. The naval engineer, Colonel Francesco Rotundi, worked out the modernization project for the old battleships. The new configuration envisaged a displacement of 23,000 tons and a small increase in land due to a new bow design. The main armament would have decreased from 13 to 10 guns with increased caliber to 320 mm. Secondary armament consisted of 12 120 mm guns in six twin turrets and eight 100 mm guns in four twin turrets. These would have acted as AA defense or additional secondary guns. After some more thinking, the reconstruction plan was approved and works started in October 1933. The Cavour started its reconstruction in Trieste and the Cesare in Genova. The decision to rebuild the Cavour class must then be put in the context of the early 1930s. Negotiations for the new naval treaty were three years away and the future of battleships in the new naval treaty was still uncertain. Within the limits of the previous agreements, the reconstruction of Cesare and Cavour was considered an adequate response to the Dunkirk and a stopgap solution for the time being. At the end of 1933, talks took place between the French and the Italians, trying to agree on the limitation for future naval constructions until 1936. However, the talks derailed in March 1934, when France decided to lay down the second Dunkirk-class battlecruiser in response to the fourth Deutschland-class battleship laid down by Germany. In direct response, Italy reacted by laying down two brand new battleships of 35,000 tons, the limit prescribed by the treaty. They were armed with nine 381 mm guns. Thus, the Littorio class came to be, with the first two ships called Littorio and Vittorio Veneto. The decision was pushed forward by Admiral Domenico Cavagnari, a powerful figure who merged the political and military leadership of the Regia Marina. Cavagnari still believed in the battleship as the central and most important vessel in the navy. He convinced a reluctant Mussolini to make the effort of building the new units, putting under stress the already limited budget. In response, the French laid down their new 35,000 tons battleships, the Richelieu and the Jean Bart. With the end of the battleship vacancy approaching, talks for the new naval treaty started in 1935. However, with Italy and Japan abandoning the talks, the treaty expired in 1936. The United States, France and the British Empire signed the renewed London Naval Treaty, 
but serious attempts to end naval disarmament had failed and the race for new constructions had basically started. At the end of 1935, the Regia Marina started to consider and study the reconstruction of the two duilios. The final decision on their reconstruction was taken in 1937, and the two ships entered the shipyards soon after the works on the two cavours had ended. This decision still puzzles historians today and does not have a clear explanation. As mentioned before, the decision to rebuild the Cavour and the Cesare was a stopgap solution in a period of uncertainty for the construction of capital ships. However, the situation had radically changed in 1937. The naval race had started once again, and all new foreign construction would have been superior to the rebuilt Duilius, even the modernized super dreadnoughts. In addition, this decision created a true resource bottleneck given the limited availability of skilled workforce coupled with the increasing difficulties in the imports of raw materials, mainly due to the depreciation of the Italian lira. Not rebuilding the Duilios could have meant a faster completion of the two first Littorios, or also the early completion of the Roma, laid down in 1938. Perhaps the Regia Marina believed that by rebuilding the Duilios it could have quickly set up an homogeneous division of four modernized battleships, at a relatively low cost. On a technical level, the rebuilt Duilio class battleships were better armed than the rebuilt Cavour class. They could count on a more modern and effective secondary and AA armament. I briefly mentioned the Roma. This unit was part of the last consistent pre-war naval program from 1938, which allowed the construction of two additional Littorio class battleships, 16 ocean-going submarines, and 12 scout cruisers of the Capitani Romani class. This last program was only partially completed because of the start of the war in Europe, but it was still in line with Cavagnari's vision for a grand and balanced navy, still centered around a core of modern battleships. Such balanced navy would have also relied on several destroyers, torpedo boats and submarines. In the interwar period, the Regia Marina never stopped the construction of these kind of vessels, but this will be a good topic for a future video. I hope you have enjoyed today's overview. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to receive updates from the channel. As always, sources can be found in the description, together with the links to my social media pages. Good luck and fair wins!